Good morning to our students and staff and our distinguished guests that are here at T.C. Williams High School this morning. My name is Ms. Carmen Sanders, and I am the King Street Campus Administrator for T.C. Williams High School. I wanted to welcome you all for a wonderful um, event that is going to take place where you will get an opportunity to see all of our students on display and the wonderful things that they are learning in our career and technical education courses. Um, I am here with Dr. Gerald Arman, who is our Executive Director for Secondary Instruction, and he is going to also welcome you to our school today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sanders. Thank you, Ms. Sanders, and again, welcome, and on behalf of our superintendent and school board, welcome to T.C. Williams. The last two years, I have um, had the fortunate uh, responsibility to supervise career and technology education for Alexandria, and I, before that, I supervised the high school, but I knew enough about CTE, being a middle school principal, to be dangerous, and now um, working with Dr. Tricia Jacobs and uh, other CTE uh, specialists and teachers, I now know about the program areas, the career clusters, and that we have now 17, and really excited in helping um, our principals and our high school project understand that CTE crosses every one of our subject areas and how important it is and how can we expand on it and also make sure that every student understand those opportunities. So again, welcome and I hope you have a great day today. And now there will be greetings from Acti, Ms. Leanne Wilson. Can we please give her a hand as she comes? Thank you, everyone, and happy CTE month. We're very excited to be here. Um, and thank you so much, uh, all the staff, educators, and administrators uh, here at TC Williams. It's just such an honor for us to be with you today. Um, and there is a CTE uh, celebrity in the house today, and that is Miss Kimberly Wilson. And for those of you, yes, Kimberly. And for those of you that were not aware, uh, Kimberly recently was named uh, ACTE's 2020 Teacher of the Year. So we're very proud of her. Yeah, so we're excited, and for nearly three decades, she's proven herself to be an outstanding CT educator to middle and high school students, and she is not only a terrific educator, but she's also served as a mentor for new teachers, so we're very proud of her for that, and she really does represent everything that CTE stands for. That's why we're so excited to be here today. Um, you know, usually we look around the country or, or around our local area to see what, uh, what school the staff are going to attend and, and invite our, our important um, CT community to. And so Kimberly made that easy for us this year because we wanted to make sure we, uh, we were able to see her program and really celebrate that. So CTE Month highlights the benefits that CTE br brings to learners of all ages to the 21st century economy. Today's careers require both technical and employability skills. As everyone here will hear from um, the students shortly and the see in all the classes that we're gonna have a chance to visit, that's what, exactly what's happening at TC Williams. So I wanna thank all of you who uh, made the trip out here today. Um, and in advance, we'd like to thank all of the students because you're what makes uh, CTE possible and you just epitomize everything that, uh, that this country and economy needs. So thank you so much for having us and welcome, welcoming us to your school. Thank you. If the students could join us up on stage now, please. Before we get started, I first want to introduce Dr. Jacobs to come up and just give a couple of remarks, and then we'll jump right into the student panel. Good morning, everyone. I have a few more remarks than what we had originally planned because I wanted to sort of set up where we are in ACPS for all of you um, with career and technical education. And I do have some PowerPoint slides and I have plenty of those because you know how we are with those. We just 
we just update them, recycle them. So please don't get worried that I'm going to go through all of them, but I am going to um, shuffle through some because I think it's important for you to see where we are, where we're going, and actually where we came from and what we have to offer our, our students here at ACPS. As many of you know, our curriculum in Virginia is housed at, um, with our Verso system at the CTE Resource Center. Um, I'm, I'm saying that because it's a system that holds over 500 curricula frameworks. That's a lot of frameworks for the Commonwealth. And it's really overloaded, and we actually have legislation in right now with the General Assembly to try and get more money passed to re redo this whole system. Because if it crashes, the Commonwealth with the CTE curriculum will go down. And obviously, with 500 curricula frameworks, it's pretty darn important to not only the teachers in the Commonwealth, but also for our students. We, um, I'm just going to go through this. Let's get to some data. Um, our total CTE enrollment here in ACPS <clears throat> is 6,673 students enrolled in CTE courses. That's up from last year, as you can see. We're pretty proud of that, and we really believe that it's going to continue to grow as we bring new programs in. So at our middle school, we have 2,540 students enrolled, and at our high school, 3,939. The Governor's Health Science Academy has 194 students. I think it's important to know that we do have 14 career clusters represented here in ACPS, 24 pathways. We are bringing three new pathways on next year with our Health Science Academy. Um, 72 high school courses approximately. We're bringing eight new ones on next year um, in our Health Science Academy as well as in network hardware and also in aerospace. Something to point out, I know this is prob probably a little small, but I wanted you to see that um, the 17-18 data shows that we had, um, in our test taker completers, passing a credentialing test, we had 357 out of our 369 um, completers with a 96.75% rate for passing. Um, that's something that our teachers need to be proud of. And if there are any in here, and I see some, I just want to say how proud I am of you. And I know that that number is going to even go up. So thank you. So what we do know from last year, from our preliminary data that doesn't come out until next month, is that we have 307 total completers. It's down a little bit, but there are reasons for that I'm not going to get into right now, but um, we think that there were some problems perhaps with the um, duplicated and unduplicated system that was using, and we're working with technology right now, the te technology department, to make sure that we are grabbing every single completer and every single credential taker that is passing a credential in our data. So that's something to be proud of also, that we have a partnership with our IT department. Um, 158 of those students were standard diploma, 144 advanced studies diploma, five applied studies diplomas, and 100 CTE dual enrollment students out of that. I wanted you to know that at ACPS, we're using the information that was put out by ACTE and Advanced ACTE about um, equity 
And I think it's important that you all know that we are working with our teachers across our division, not only in CTE, but looking at ways that we can take down barriers for all of our students to be able to participate in our CTE programs and courses. We've been working in partnership with the EL, SPED, and talented and gifted um, coordinators in the, and directors in the division to make sure that as a team, we know how to service all of our students. And we're making a lot of progress by using this document that the Commonwealth put out this past summer um, for CTE industry credentials and the accommodations afforded to our EL population um, as well as our special education um, population. Currently, we are only in ACPS using 16 of the almost 500 credentials that are associated with our curricula. We are looking to create this, um, obtain this cr um, credential goal um, that each student will become career and or college ready by having the opportunity to obtain at least one credential per CTE course. And we're currently creating a database where we are going to have three different credentials for each course offering so that we can best match the credential to the, to the skill set as well as the academic achievement of this student. Work-based learning. Um, we have been using the Commonwealth's work-based learning guide and looking at ways that we can improve the work-based learning opportunities and increase the number of work-based learning opportunities for our students. Dr. Mann um, explained a little bit about having um, the education design team understanding that CTE runs across all curricula areas. And because of that, we have created this framework for programming. If you, can, if you notice here in the middle, core courses, and then you'll notice four quadrants. And those quadrants house the 17 career clusters. What we are proposing to do with this is create four industry advisory boards that are separate from our CTE advisory board. And these boards will be creating databases for us for resources that can be utilized by our teachers and students, not just in CTE, but all curricular areas, but based off of the 17 career clusters. As other school divisions are struggling with a way to figure out how to manage work-based learning opportunities, we think we have a pretty good idea here of how we can create the databases and the courses that belong in each of these career clusters, you can see could double or move into more than one of those quadrants. So we would have more than one board working on opportunities for students taking certain courses. Um, we feel that we have a very progressive way of looking at work-based learning, and we are really excited to see what the outcomes will be from this effort. Our students do participate in the, the CTE, the Career and Technical Education Student Organizations. Um, all of our program areas are represented in our CTSOs. The only program area that we do not have here in ACPS is the Agricultural Education Program. Um, we are looking at data because everything we do is based on labor market data and whether or not students would be surveyed and would want to take those courses. So that is an area, a program area that we are looking at for the future. 
our teachers are very, very involved with their professional development um, teacher organizations and participate during the year professional development as well as the summer professional development. This is a, a quote that I gave teachers at the beginning of the school year. And we talked about how they have a choice every day to make a difference for a student. And we have challenged each other to make sure that we are opening the door, not closing the door for students, breaking down those barriers, making sure our students can participate and are successful to be either career or college ready. And they were given a key that they can keep on their person that does say CTE um, success. So I wanted to put that in there because I think that is our theme or our goal for the year. Bringing down those barriers, making sure all students have access to our courses, and making sure that we take every opportunity to open the door for CTE success for every student. Now I am done. I hope that gave you a, a nice snapshot of ACPS. Okay, thank you Dr. Jacobs for that um, overview of um, Alexandria Public Schools. First, I just wanna thank everyone for, for being here, students, folks from different organizations, the US Department of Education, we really appreciate um, everybody's investment here in CTE. Um, okay, so for the student panel, why don't we first just start, um, why don't you introduce yourself, your name, what program you're in, and then also your favorite uh, experience in CTE thus far. Hi everyone, my name is Jayla. I'm in the culinary arts program. Um, my favorite thing this far, so thus far is, of course, cooking, but you know, getting to have bonds with everyone and getting to learn a lot of new things about everyone, not just myself, and just new experiences. I'm Charlotte. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm Charlotte. I'm from TV media and photography, and I've been in it for four years, so I can't really place my favorite experience, but. Pretty much every year we get the opportunity to go out into D.C. and interview protesters, interview people trying to make statements on whatever they want to make statements on, or even just interview people on the street doing whatever. Hi, my name is Amal, and I'm also in the TV media program. And I've been in the program for three years now. And my favorite thing probably would be that I've been more open or like I've become an open person from this program and I've also been able to like meet new people and collaborate with a lot of people and that's been really great and also have my foot in the door career wise because this is this class has taught me a lot about the real industry and that's really amazing. Hello my name is Abigail and I'm in Virginia Teachers for Tomorrow however I did do intro to early childhood and dual enrollment early childhood and my favorite thing I would say is meeting new people through it and just bonding with the children. Hi there, I'm Malcolm. I'm in the marketing program. I've also taken classes in automotive technology uh, and com computer systems. Uh, my favorite uh, opportunity through, through the CTE program is I joined DECA, as you can see right there. Uh, and I'm actually the president of the TC Williams chapter as well as a state officer, one of nine in Virginia. Uh, so that's been a really great experience over the past year. Hi, I'm Sasha and I'm part of the Army ROTC program here. And uh, my favorite part would be getting to take on a leadership role and meeting new people. Hi, um, my name is Valerie. I'm representing AOF Academy of Finance, and I'm your FBLA president, Future Business Leaders of America. Uh, my best memory in the program, on both programs, is building bonds with students in such a large school. AOF is a three-year course in which you are building a connection with uh, a select few students. Uh, my name is Abdul. I'm from the Gover Governor's Medical Health Sciences Academy, and I guess my favorite part about it was definitely the teachers. It's the first two years right now, but I've had really good experiences, 
and they're just really good people in general. Great. Um, I know I asked. Yeah, give them a round of applause. I know I asked the students to introduce themselves. I neglected to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jared Nagurka. I work with ACT, and we're just so thrilled to be here for CTE Month. Um, okay, so starting back at the end now, um, I'm curious how CTE has impacted your um, career goals or any sort of post-secondary plans and whether that's helped shape one way or another um, what you want to do moving forward after high school. I mean, myself, I've always known what I've wanted to do as a child. Uh, I wanted to grow up and be a doctor. But what the Health Sciences Academy has done for me is help narrow down the path and prepare me for my future. So I know after college, I'm going to go to med school and probably after that, a uh, focused uh, institute of education. Um, before starting uh, the Academy of Finance, I could not see myself doing a finance major. However, um, I've decided to go to school and major in dentistry and minor in financial education. Um, before high school, I had absolutely no idea that I wanted to join the military. Um, this really opened up the door for that, and it's a, I think it's a great opportunity to get my foot in there and um, learn new skills. Uh, for me, I've always wanted to, to work in business or marketing when I get older, so marketing classes have really just helped me kind of hone my skills and, and be prepared for the future. Um, through this class, since I've bonded with the kids and I've just been able to talk to teachers and mentors, I've realized that I want to be a social worker and that I wanted to go to Virginia State, which we have a connection with. Um, for me, I've always like wanted to do film, like ever since I was younger, it's just something I said, oh, I'm gonna do film and all that stuff. But like joining this class freshman year, it's like helped me narrow down what it is and like it's actually like taught me a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have if I didn't join the program. And I think that's great. Yeah, I've always known that I wanted to go into film, but now, thanks to this class, I absolutely know. Like, there's no question about it. Through all my college applications, like, there hasn't been a single moment of doubt, like, is this really what I want to do? Because I know that I can absolutely see myself doing this for the rest of my life, thanks to my teachers. Um, I definitely have wanted to cook since I was younger. Um, so just joining this class, I've been in it for two years. Um, it's definitely helped me a lot. I never would have thought I would come this far, but thanks to my teacher and thanks to everything that I've done and everything that I've learned, I was able to, you know, be certain that I wanted to do this. So. Great. So we know that it's really important to have high-quality CTE programs. But that's just one step of it because we also need to make sure that students are aware of the options and opportunities um, that they do have within their schools. Um, and so I'm curious how you all first found out about the CTE offerings, what convinced you to enroll in courses, um, and what you would say to other students who might be interested in participating in CTE. Um, so we, I've, since I've always known what I wanted to do, I know I knew that there was a culinary arts program. Um, we do schedules every year, so you know I was just excited to be there and I wanted to check it out. So we do like we have class, we have a point in time where we switch to classes, and you know we are able to. The teachers talk to us about different CTE courses, and they give us a little background information. And so that's a great opportunity for all the students to you know decide on what they want to do if they want to try something new. So that's how I found out. Um, so I actually first enrolled in journalism with one of my best friends, and then we didn't get into the same class, which is kind of the only reason we enrolled, was to have a class together. Um, but then we both called our counselors, and there were no other classes filled for the periods we wanted except for TV and media production. And so we were both like, God, I guess. And we both still didn't get, <laughs> we both still didn't get into the same class, but then we've been taking it together for four years because we both knew like that's where we needed to be just as soon as we got into the classes. And if you want to take TV, but you don't, if you aren't sure about taking TV, we get to watch movies. You learn a bunch of stuff about like the production of movies that you never thought about before this. Um, and you just learn how to make videos. And so a lot of kids take the class because they want to be like YouTubers or something, or they want to learn how to vlog. And this is a really great resource if you want to do that, or if you want to go to like 
the more serious side, like of film criticism or film production? Uh, for me personally, I've always, I've known there was a TV program here uh, for like the longest time since probably maybe sixth grade because all my siblings went here and they like told me all the classes that they have here. So I was like, ooh, TV media, that's what I'm gonna do. And like, that's always been my mindset. And then once I was in there freshman year, it's just, it made me love it even more. And like, I've been in here for three years now. So it's like, I wouldn't be doing anything else if I didn't really actually enjoy it. Well, in ninth grade, I did not know. Like, I was debating which classes to take, and like, Intro to Childhood was the only one that caught my attention, so I just took that class. And throughout my whole year until 12th grade, I've just been really into it with my teacher, and like, she's just a really good mentor to me, and I really liked the class, so I decided to just stick with it. And for people who just wanna deal with children at all, I would tell them to take that class. Uh, as I mentioned, I've always been interested in business, so taking marketing classes was kind of natural for me. Uh, but what I'd recommend for, for younger students is kind of to take advantage of all the offerings we have here. Uh, we have such a great wealth of classes. As I mentioned, I've taken automotive and computer classes uh, in addition to so many others. Uh, and, and really just taking advantage of those and kind of finding what fits for you, especially if you're one of the people, uh, one of the 99% who don't know what they want to do later on. Really taking those classes helps you understand. So like I said before, I did not, I had no idea what I wanted to do and the military was the last thing on my mind. But um, if I'm being completely honest, my parents put me into this and I want to thank them because it's opened a lot of open, it's opened a lot of doors for me, a lot of good opportunities, lots of leadership positions. So anyone that wants to take on a leadership role and get your foot in the door with the military, this is a great opportunity. Um. My story, I'm originally not from Virginia. I'm from North Carolina. So um, when we moved up here in 2017, during orientation in open house for TC, uh, Mr. Pontefino, he had a table for Academy of Finance. And I did not have the opportunity to interview my ninth grade year because I wasn't here. Uh, so my sophomore year at the table uh, during orientation, I had an on-the-spot interview and I wasn't aware of it. However, obviously I'm in the program and I fell in love with the class. Um, Mr. P and Ms. WB have been great influences and have w walked me and helped me be the woman that I am today. So, thank you. So, the Medical Health Sciences Academy is a relatively new program. So, when I was an eighth grader, I was talking to my counselor about my possible choices for the next year. He's like, have you heard of the Health Sciences Academy? It's gonna start up next year. If you sign up and you get in, then you'll be part of the inaugurating class. So I was like, really? And it was, it was very exciting. So now I'm in it, and we're the first people to come through. And so far, the experience has just been amazing. Great. Um, so I want to talk about CTSOs, or career and technical student organizations. I know that we um, talked about FBLA and DECA earlier. Actually, we have someone from the DECA National Office here, so you guys should, should talk later. Um, but can you explain kind of what a CTSO is for those of you that are in CTSOs, what that experience has been like, what sorts of um, benefits it has brought you into the school, um, and just give some more information on it. So I guess if you're a part of a CTSO. Um, so for FBLA, Future Business Leaders of America, like I said, uh, we focus, we're a club that meets once a month on Wednesdays, and we focus on um, volunteering opportunities. And uh, during February and March, we have our uh, regional competition. So in February, we have our online testing, and in March, we have our uh, performance task. And there's a wide range of topics and activities that people can compete in. I personally, uh, joining also in my sophomore year uh, with FBLA, I feel that it's another family inside of the school where you're able to find like a cluster of people who are like-minded like you. We're not all wanting to go down the same career path. However, we're working together to build each other up and learn how to grow in the society that we live in. Um, so I mentioned I'm a state officer for DECA. Uh, one of the things that's required is that we memorize the mission statement. So I'll just give you guys that, and maybe that'll 
suffice. Um, DECA prepares emerging leaders and entrepreneurs for careers in marketing, finance, hospitality, and management in high schools and colleges around the globe. Uh, so what that really means, though, is that um, it's, a student, it's a student organization for marketing students as well as uh, kids who are in finance or um, hospitality and tourism classes. Uh, and really, it's, it's an opportunity for those students to kind of come together and uh, work on those skills that they learn in those classes in real world experiences. Um, so in competitions, we have district, state, and national competitions, or international as well. Um, and then also we, we have service opportunities, leadership opportunities, uh, and we go out in the community and, and help and stuff like that, you know, um, classic student organization activities. So I don't know if this super counts as a CTSO, but it's right there up on the board, so I'm going to say it does. Um, but in TV, we have something called Broadcast Club, where the students who do the best work and try their very best in the TV media program get extra opportunities, such as, like, if you guys see anybody wearing those red TV shirts at any kind of sports game, that's who that is, or at any other kinds of events, we basically get a big step forward in our career into the field of videography because we get to work on getting our own clients or working with clients or working for people. And we get to practice all kinds of stuff like that and all of the more technical side of things along with doing our passion, which is making videos. Um, and so that's nice. And I know there are students recording um, our event today, so why don't we give them a round of applause too. You see them around. Okay, so I'm curious, maybe by a show of hands, is anybody involved in dual enrollment here? Okay, wow, um, that is awesome. Why don't we go and talk about dual enrollment, what that is, what types of opportunities that provides to you, um, and what your experience has been like. Um, so I am taking uh, Composition 12, which is a college course. Um, so it gives us college credits um, and so it's kind of, it's like an English class and we do mostly writing. Um, I would prefer that class over a regular English class because it's just, you know, it's just more competitive and it gets me prepared more for college, which is something that I need to be prepared for. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. And in addition to dual enrollment, is anybody in dual enrollment um, for their CT class too? Okay. Um, so TV Media Levels 2 and 3 are both dual enrollment courses. TV Media 2, who produces the show Everyday Titan for our school, is a double blocked period class. So when I took it, we had it first and second period. When she took it, it was fourth and fifth. But so um, not only does that give us a lot more time to work on our skills, because if you've ever been in a TV class, you know that it takes a lot of time to do certain things like take videos or edit videos or offload footage or any, of par any parts of the process take a long time. And so the dual enrollment helps us get that extra time for it as well as helping us, I really, I like getting the credit for the work that I'm doing. Um, getting the dual enrollment credit makes me feel a lot better about the work I'm doing instead of getting a general education credit because not only does it boost my GPA, it makes me feel like I'm getting a lot more bang for my buck. And it really encourages students to keep going with the course, which, as far as I've seen, the kids just get to love it the more they do it. Yeah, so I'm also in the TV, D, TV2, and also D, D, TV3. And what she said is, like, we do everyday tie-in during the um, TV2, which is really great because if you see in our TV thing, in our the TV room, we have a studio, which is like a real new studio, which is like really amazing for us to even have that type of opportunity to actually learn in what people in the industry do and like with real things they use with the real cameras, with the real audio equipment and like all that stuff is like really amazing and the fact that it is tied with a college, it makes us want to do it more. But I'm also in DE Comp 11 and also DE US History. So the, those classes are also really great because I'm getting a lot more credit for the classes I'm taking here as if I were to take AP or something like that. And those classes help really help me prepare for what I'm gonna be doing in college and like the workload and everything. And I don't think I would have gotten that if I would have taken like an AP class. The class I'm in is dual enrollment, Virginia Teachers for Tomorrow. And that class is really hands-on. For example, um, this month we started doing our field experience in Patrick Henry and we just get to assist the teacher and helping their students 
And we also get to do lesson plans, which is nice because we get to teach the students ourselves, which is which gets us prepared for the future. I'm currently in dual enrollment advanced entrepreneurship and also took a dual enrollment entrepreneurship last year. Uh, also in automotive technology, they've got dual enrollment um, auto two and three. Um, so we have, a, we have a great wealth, and they already mentioned some other dual enrollment classes. We have a great wealth of dual enrollment classes. And I think the amazing thing about them is not only that you get college credit that transfers um, to every in-state school and then a lot of out-of-state schools as well. Um, the amazing thing is that it's really just an advanced class um, where, where all the students are really dedicated to that, that type of learning, whether it's in, in the medical field or the, the culinary field, whatever it is, those students are, are there ready to, ready to learn and, and participate um, in a college-level environment. So I'm taking DE US History, and um, that's a really good course for rigorous work, and it teaches you time management um, for sure. Um, the workload is, a, it gets heavy, but we can manage, um, and yeah. Um, I'm in DE for AOF. Uh, your senior year uh, DE, or AOF can count as your DE credit. So being that it is a three-year program, you follow it all the way up to your senior year. Uh, the second half of the year, so your second semester, you're focusing on your DE classes. Um, you're working on college courses to, for in your financial field, and it's bettering yourself, and it's informing you of how to be an adult in the society. So right now, I'm in DE Medical Terminology with Anatomy. Uh, this is through the Medical Health Sciences Academy, and the whole academy goes through GW, so all the classes you take are GW courses while at the same time high school courses. It's not where you just have one big final that determines whether you get the credits or not. It's based on your yearly grade and performance in that class. So what that means is that all these students are earning college credit while they're still in high school. And I think that's worthy of another round of applause. OK, so let's do another show of hands question. Um, is anybody either has earned or is, or is working towards a credential of some sort or has had an internship or some type of experience related to their CTE um, programming? OK, yeah, let's talk about that. Um, in your sophomore year in the Academy of Finance, you interned in our school's credit union, uh, Commonwealth One, in our cafeteria. Um, you do that throughout the year. You're learning your telenavigator system. So we're learning actual skills that you would use in a credit union. And I think that's it for right now. Uh, I took advanced fashion marketing last year. Uh, and through that class, I earned an in industry credential, which was uh, customer service, um, which essentially just meant at the end of the year, we took an exam, uh, and passing it means I am customer service ready. So I told my boss. It didn't impress her. <laughs> um, through dual enrollment, early childhood, you get the NOCTI test, so I earned that. Um, I, didn't, I haven't earned any credentials, but I have been able to work with actual real clients. Like this past few months, I've been working with act, uh, people from the AC ACPS with to work on census and send videos for them. And we have finished three videos for them and they were very impressed. So that was a really great experience to actually work with real clients. Yeah, and um, again, we're not working towards any credentials, but we do. Um, students in TV and broadcast club are can work towards getting a job at ACPS as um, digital media producers. And that's another thing, just like she said, that we can work towards. Um, we take either a NOCTI test or we take a serve safe, so we get a credit for that, for culinary. Cool, okay, I have one more question and then we're gonna open it up if anybody in the audience has a burning question they wanna ask. Um, and then we'll close things out. So my last question is, so we talk a lot about employability skills. Some people call them soft skills or 21st century um, skills. And essentially what that uh, means is what type of skills outside of the technical skills that you're learning in your classes um, do you think you've picked up through CTE that might translate to when you enter the workforce? 
For me, it's communication, but communication with people on the outside. And so thanks to TV, I've had the ability to go out in the world and get my own clients. And so I've worked for Trident CrossFit. I've worked for MacArthur, their PTA. Um, I've worked with the Alexandria Kinder Choir. I've worked with Agenda Alexandria. I've worked with a bunch of other stuff, both with opportunities offered by the TV media program and opportunities that I just went out and got myself because my teachers taught me how to communicate with clients, how to entice people to want you to make videos for them and just how to go out and get your own work. Yeah, for me it's also communication because before this program I didn't really know how to talk to people very well, but now like I know how to and like it's much easier and also how to write better emails because when most of our communication is through emails so like I've learned how to structure it and how to ask them and like to do follow-ups and all that and also to work well in groups and to know when to trust someone and to let know and to know their abilities and your abilities so now you can rely on them and I think that's great for the workforce. I would say communication too and leadership especially during the time where there was a few of us that were able to go to Virginia State to do their GROWS program, and we were allowed to be teacher cadets, and we had to talk to people that went to Virginia State and the professors, so without that, like I would not have done that, and I probably wouldn't have done this either because I don't like talking in front of people. Uh, the difference between a lot of career and technical education courses and the, and the general um, credit classes is that CTE courses offer a lot of hands-on and group work activities, and I think the, uh, those activities kind of help you develop the skills that you'll need uh, to work in the professional industry because um, that's really the, the skills you'll, you'll be using, communication, leadership, um, organization, things like that, time management. And um, when you're working in a group, those are, those are vital. Um, for me, it's mostly leadership and discipline. Um, so leadership is because when you're in your class, you're mostly surrounded by people younger than you and you're called a class leader. And so they put that on you as the cadet to show them what to do, what not to do, how to do things. Um, so that's a big part of it. Also discipline, not in like a bad way, but knowing when to listen, when to talk, so. Um, I would say communication, teamwork, and like leadership in a way. Uh, being able to communicate is your key to life, you have to communicate effectively, being able to listen effectively. Um, like, I learned what to do and what not to do in tough situations and still working on those. Um, but you're able to build and grow and AOF actually helped me get my first job because your sophomore year you go through the interview process and so we interviewed in our class and then I took the resume and everything that I built inside of AOF and I took it to my first job, which I still have, so yeah. Uh, from the academy, I've learned critical thinking skills, especially about how everything is connected. One thing leads to another and another to another. Uh, you can kind of take what you learn in class and apply it to the real world as well. It's just a nice skill to have in general. Great, so I lied, we're out of time, but if you're going on the tour, there'll be plenty of opportunities to talk to students, and if you are a student, you can talk to your colleagues. Um, so please join me in thanking this excellent panel of students. <laughs>